Welcome back to the channel. Today in this video we're going to be talking about adding additional uh, WAN sources to your router and then in turn into Bondix. Um, adding a second wired WAN connection or using Wi-Fi as WAN. Um, we're going to connect both of those, uh, show you how to add them, uh, make sure that they're working and then we'll show you how to add them into Bondix and make sure that they appear within the Bondix server so you can use them as additional Bondix sources. Um, Cool, let's get on with it. So if we head over into our router interface, so again, we're going back to the same RUTX 14 router that we've used in all of the previous videos that we've done. Um, so we're on firmware 766, which is the current latest version uh, as at the time of uh, recording the video. So what we'll do is we'll go over to network and then wireless. Now what we can do is we can um, use either 2.4 or 5 gigahertz down the bottom here um, to scan and search for a Wi-Fi network to use as an additional WAN. Uh, we're going to scan with 5 gigahertz. I would always recommend scanning with 5 gig, uh, using 5 gigahertz as 2.4 tends to be pretty much saturated everywhere and it's not reliable. Um, so if we click on scan... What this will do is it will go off and it will look for Wi-Fi networks in the area that we could potentially connect to. So I've set up a YouTube Wi-Fi network uh, for this test. Um, so there's a couple of things that we need to point out here. Firstly, the signal on the left-hand side. What you want to go for is the strongest signal that you've got for your particular Wi-Fi network uh, that you're trying to connect to. Um, once you've connected to it, um, you want to make sure that your router is in its final location uh, for where you're going to use it. If you connect it, so for example, let's look at a, uh, a football stadium, for example. Uh, you've got north, south, east and west. If you're in the east side and you connect to the Wi-Fi network there, yes, the Wi-Fi network will be available over on the west side, but if you notice over here, there are MAC addresses that are available. What you're actually doing is connecting to the Wi-Fi network on the access point that is closest to you, that's got the strongest signal. If you then move from the east side of the stadium over to the west side of the stadium, it will no longer connect to that network because it doesn't have access to or cannot connect to the access point that you set up on the east side of the stadium. Um, so make sure that when you're doing this particular bit here, that your router is in its final location as to where it's going to be used. Um, so in this particular case, you can see YouTube Wi-Fi uh, on channel 48 is at 93%. We do have another access point, um, which is a lot further away. We've only got 61% coming off that. So we'll choose the 93% and we'll click Join Network. The WPA passphrase, so that's the password that you've been given. Then we click Submit. Now at this point there's going to be a number of pop-ups that come up. Um, we can just click OK to any of those. We don't need to change anything on here. So this is the first one. So we just hit Save and Apply. And then there will be another pop-up which is this one here. So again we'll hit Save and Apply. So now you can see down the bottom here we've got on our uh, WAN interfaces, so our um, internet facing uh, interfaces, we've got a Wi-Fi network here. The status has just changed to up. Uh, we can see the IP address that we've been given internally, and that is all working. So what we need to do is head over to Bondix settings, and then scroll down to where it says interfaces. Now you can see here that we've got IF or interface WAN1. So this is an additional WAN connection that was added, which is when we added the Wi-Fi as WAN. So all we need to do at this point is to switch it to on, and then save and apply. Okay, if we head over to our Bondix server that we set up and take a look at that, uh, we will now see that our RUTX14 test tunnel has two connections on it. And if we go into that tunnel, we can see that WLAN, so wireless LAN 1, and also ETH1, which is the wired connection, are both connected and we're bonding both of those channels. So now that we've added our Wi-Fi as WAN, we're going to add an additional wired connection as well. So if we head over to um, VLAN, 
what we need to do is we need to add another VLAN, which we will then associate um, the port that will change. So on the front of a Teltonica, you have four network ports and one WAN port. Um, what you can do uh, is change any of the LAN ports into any number of additional ports. Uh, my recommendation is always at least keep one LAN port because that will connect all your other devices locally. So you've got three additional LAN ports that you can set up. We're going to set up one, which is going to be on port four. So the first thing we need to do is head over to VLAN. We need to add a new VLAN. So that gives it ID number three. Uh, we need to change LAN 4 from being untagged on here to off and being off on here to untagged. So once that's done, we save and apply. When that configuration is saved, we'll then head over to our WAN connection over here. Uh, so under network, we go to WAN. Then what we do is we go down to the add button and add a new interface. So we'll simply rename this one as WAN2, and then we'll go to uh, DHCP as a protocol, so we'll just expect an IP address to be given to us. Uh, then we go to physical settings, and we choose ETH03. So ETH0 is the, uh, the, the, the base physical local area network. And then remember we called VLAN, uh, it's ID of number three. And that's where the point three comes in. So it's the physical network, but it's the virtual network number three that sits underneath that. So we'll select that one and then we'll hit save and apply. That's now our WAN connection added. Um, so when you plug a network connection into that, you'll go through the same process again. You'll go to Bondix, you'll go to settings, and you'll see here it's added a second WAN here. So once you're ready, you can simply turn that on. Uh, when you plug it in, it will then connect, and then Bondix will see it, and you can start bonding with it. Now remember, you can only have f a maximum of four channels uh, bonded at the same time. So as you can see here, we've got five. So if you selected all five of those, one of them would not connect because there's only four uh, channels available that you can bond with. So just bear that in mind. So hope this one's been... Um, helpful for you. Um, if you find the videos that we do helpful, don't forget, drop a little like and a subscribe. That helps us immensely in terms of getting the videos out to other people to see. Um, and we'll see you on the next one.